Hey guys, uh, I wanted to do a quick screencast to show a contact multiscript I've been working on called the Flex Router. The, uh, the name is a bit stupid. It's basically a, a flexible key switch router multiscript. And uh, in a, a thinly veiled and desperate attempt to avoid writing documentation, uh, here's a tutorial video instead, which will hopefully tell you what you need to know to, uh, to use this thing. So first things first is you fire up a web browser and uh, go to, there's going to be a link in the uh, in the description field, but you can type in if you really want to, urandom.ca slash flexrouter, and this will take you to the GitHub page for the project. Um, the source code is available, it's it's uh, under an open source license, MIT license, so you can, you can fork it, make your own changes, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, if you do make changes, though, I'd love to get them back, um, so please submit. Uh, pull requests and uh, feed your changes back if, if, if they're useful to the community, then I think uh, uh, I'll incorporate them. So um, there's some details here in the readme about what it is and sort of how to install it. We'll walk through all that in this video. So uh, what you want to do first is grab the source code. The source code will, this will be compiled script. So the compiled script will be, um, there will be a link for that in the description field as well, but you can click it here from the readme, um, which I actually blew right by. Here it is, compiled script. So this is the compiled script. Again, you probably wouldn't actually want to read this or modify it or do anything except to copy it to the clipboard. The real source code is in the project page. That's what you want to look at. It's commented and you know, this comments are all stripped from the compiled version. It's not useful at all. So um, copy to clipboard and toggle back to contact and click the uh, script uh, toolbar button to pull down the script pane click the edit button and there's a text area that you can just paste the contents of the script in. You click apply, close the edit text area. And so here's a, a blank instance of Flex Router. Um, so Flex Router gives you uh, these things called rules. You can create a rule up to 16 rules per instance. Um, and within each rule, you can have up to 128 configured key switches. So there's a bit of a, a philosophical difference with Flex Router compared to other um, multi-scripts that do key switching, in that in a lot of cases you'll see configured, for, for, for the other uh, contact multi-scripts for, for key switching, you'll configure sort of a starting channel and a starting key switch, and then everything after that is relative. So it's a very minimal configuration, easy to get going, but not terribly flexible. Um, so in this script, you've got a little bit more burden on the configuration, but it gives you a pile of flexibility. So I thought we'd go through some use cases in, I guess, increasing degrees of complexity and use the use cases to study how we're gonna actually use Flex Router to solve them. The first use case I thought we'd start with is the more conventional one, where you've got an instrument and a bunch of articulations and you just wanna use key switches to change articulations for a given instrument. So I thought we'd start with um, a clar Berlin Woodwood's clarinet. So we'll create the rule for uh, clarinet. And let's open uh, a few patches here. Let's say legato, um, stew staccato, and here's trills. Um, well, that took a while to load, but anyway. So here are the three patches open, and you can see by default contact puts them on channels one, two, and three. So, uh, so now we're going to configure the key switches for this. So the key switch channel defaults to channel one. It basically says uh, it requires all of the key switches to come in on this channel. You can only have one key switch channel per rule. So if you want to listen uh, for key switches on different channels and you need multiple rules. And then the target channel is the default for the, the rule. And, uh, and the target is once the key switch is activated, any MIDI events that come in on the source channel for the key switch, you'll see that later, will get directed to the target channel. So in this case, it's channel one. Um, because we have patches on different channels, our key switches are actually going to explicitly define the target channel um, as opposed to using the rule default. So you'll see that. So let's, uh, let's add the first key switch and we'll start at C0. And so here's the, the configuration for the key switch. The default is to block the key switch from passing through into the patch. Um, the source channel is right now zero, which says all channels. So this is, once the key switch is activated, we'll listen on all channels for MIDI events, and no matter what uh, channel the MIDI event comes in on, if it's not a key switch, 
then uh, it will get redirected to the target channel. So we're going to explicitly configure the target channel to one. So it'll go to the uh, legato patch for the clarinet. And let's do uh, the next one, and that will be target channel two, and then E0 will be target channel three. So this is you know, minimally configured. We got three patches, three key switches, and it should now work. Um, so there's clarinet, and if I, sorry, the legato, and if I do D, there's staccato, and if I do E, there's the trills. So very straightforward. Um, it's also worth pointing out you can layer key switches. So if you if I press, for example, C and D at the same time, that's actually going to layer legato and staccato. So you can see both patches there. Um, minor detail, but but handy when you want to layer articulations. So let's move on. Um, so we've got a single instrument now. Let's take sort of evolve this use case and add a second instrument in. So let's do oboes. So let's add a couple um, patches for the oboe. Let's just do legato and staccato. And and just to show that we can, let's put these on port B. So if I put the oboe legato on B1 and the staccato on B2, um, and uh, on the clarinet patch, what we should do is because because the in this use case we want to have clarinets on source MIDI channel one, oboes on source MIDI channel two. Um, we're going to explicitly configure the uh, clarinet key switches to only route MIDI events coming in on channel one. So let's make those changes now. And let's add a new rule for the oboe. So this key switch channel will be on channel two. And um, the target channel, again, doesn't really matter for, uh, for this rule because we're going to explicitly define it per key switch. So let's now learn two key switches. We'll learn C, and this is coming in on MIDI events channel two and set this to B1. So uh, what this says is that when we get a C0 on channel two, we're going to route any subsequent MIDI events on channel two to the uh, port B channel one, um, and that's the oboe legato. Now let's do D0, and that bumps up to B2. So that is all we need to do. So my controller right now is set to channel one, so it's still triggering the clarinet. If I configure my controller to send on channel two and activate C0 key switch, now I'm the oboe legato and D0 would be the staccato. So you got two source MIDI channels, two instruments uh, key switched through one instance of flex router using two rules, mind you, but, but still one instance. Um, so I think that's, probably it for the sort of simple use cases. Let's close all these and let's bypass these rules. Now let's look at a more interesting use case. Um, a lot of us are using uh, Spitfire libraries and we're starting to use UACC, which is a, a CC based articulation switch switching philosophy. Um, I've, I myself have been using Blake Ewing's uh, touch OSC template for UACC. Now you can't see my tablet, um, so I've actually I've written a, a very sort of simple skeleton version of Touch OSC for the desktop, and you can see that here. So this, so you can see when I, you know, click on a particular articulation here, you'll be able to see this is sending a CC event um, or or a note, whatever is configured for this uh, button, to the contact instance here. So you'll be able to see what I'm, if, as if I was using my tablet, what I would be pressing. So this uh, UACC tab, this is what Blake put together for uh, for the Spitfire libraries. Um, and it's convenient, I've incorporated it into my workflow. So if, like me, you've, you've been using this within your workflow, um, but you want to use other non-Spitfire libraries um, and use the same template to control them, you can use FlexRouter to do that translation for you. So let's show an example now with cinematic strings and pull up the first violins patch. Um, so in this use case, we're going to remap the articulations uh, for these uh, for our code for trim and, and so on um, from the CC events that this template sends to the standard note based key switches here. So uh, let's create a new rule for CS2. 
and key switch channel one is fine, target channel one is fine. Um, for this example, let's do MIDI learn now and uh, Arco with legato mode on, so we'll do generic legato. And so you can see that sent CC32 value 20. We're gonna redirect that to uh, Arco C0. So we've, um, oops, that was on the wrong octave. So MIDI learn C0. Um, and now we'll learn a new key switch for trim and then learn the redirection to C sharp zero. And we'll learn a key switch for half triller minor second on this template. Redirection for that is D zero. Major second is whole trill. And the key switch for that is uh, D sharp zero. Let's skip over runs. Staccato is interesting with cinematic strings and the staccato key switch. Um, it's velocity based. So there's actually two modes, staccatissimo or staccato. And if you hit F zero hard or with a velocity above 64, then it goes to staccato. And if, it, if you hit it soft with a velocity below 64, then it goes to staccatissimo. You can see here that we can actually control the redirection velocity. So we can use flex router to handle this case. So let's MIDI learn the generic shorts would be with this template, a uh, staccato. So we're going to learn the redirection to F sharp with a velocity above 64, sorry, F zero with a velocity above 64 and MIDI learn, uh, sorry, MIDI learn a new key switch for very short, which would be the spiccato or staccatissimo and learn the redirection with a soft F zero velocity is below 64. So now if I use the CC based template to send these events, you can see as I go through them, it's actually translating those to what cinematic strings expects. So there's uh, generic on staccato, sorry, generic shorts on staccato, very short on staccatissimo. So a uh, pretty straightforward configuration, Again, you know, could be easier probably, but you do it once, you save it in your template and you're done. Um, okay, so that's enough for that use case. Let me show you something particular to my workflow. Um, I've decided to dedicate channel 16 for key switches and in particular note based key switches. So um, I don't actually want to use UACC uh, for sending CC events and I don't want to use the UACC KS variant. Some of you might be familiar with within Spitfire, it's got some bugs. So what I want to do is uh, use channel 16 so that notes on this channel get remapped by a flex router to standard UACC uh, CC32 events. Um, and so note zero on this channel 16 would be translated to CC32 value zero. Note one on channel 16 would be translated to CC32 value one and so on. Um, so let's bypass this rule and let's pull up a new rule, create a new rule for call it channel 16 key switch to UACC. And let's add uh, some mural instances. So this will be uh, violins one on mural. Let's add, let's add all the patches. So do legato core and decorative. Now, typically with UACC, you would put all your patches for a particular instrument on the same MIDI channel, configure your patches to lock to UACC. This is Spitfire specific that some of you might see in it. And so now we've got all three patches configured on channel one, locked to UACC. Now, theoretically, if I send a UACC event, you can see, um, let's close the quick load. So if I click Legato, you can see the other patches have switched to none. If I go to Long's generic, you can see the Legato switch to none. And so this gives me a, a convenient way to uh, switch articulations um, within a, a set of patches all on the same channel because if a articulation doesn't exist on a particular patch and it receives a CC event for it, then it will set to, to none and ignore the event. Um, now for my purposes, I want to do that translation from channel 16 notes to the CC events that I've got my Spitfire patches currently configured to. So we're gonna listen on channel 16 for these key switches. Target channel one is fine. 
and we're going to MIDI learn the first note, which is uh, C minus zero, or sorry, sorry, C minus two, and do a redirect to CC32 and value zero. So that's fine. Um, now, a small little feature of Flex Router is that as I MIDI learn the next um, note, which would be C sharp minus two, it's taken the relative difference between the previous one and the one that I've just learned, and that distance in terms of notes is one, and it's actually applied that delta to the value. So it actually lets me um, you know, bang out a chromatic scale on my keyboard here, very clumsily, mind you, and it will automatically learn the entire range. Um, I'll stop there. So you can see it's got the 60 or whatever notes that, uh, that I've entered and it's set up the redirection from those note values to CC32 and the corresponding CC value. So now if I use this custom or modified um, template for UACC, which is actually modified to now send notes. Uh, so this would be like note, I think long is, is uh, value one. So normally, you know, with the, the standard UACC template, this would be CC32 value one. Now this would be note one on channel 16. So if I send that, you can see it's FlexRider has done that translation and it's switched to long, legato, um, this will be spiccato. You can, you know, so you can, you get the idea. Um, so FlexRider is doing that translation for me. A variant of this would be um, if, for example, I was generally happy with Mural Violins 1, but I wanted to cherry pick articulations from other libraries. Let's say I'm uh, dissatisfied with Tremolo and Mural, and I want to use uh, Tremolo from Cinematic Strings instead. So if I hit the Tremolo key switch um, on the uh, tablet, it'll send me to Cinematic Strings Tremolo instead. So let's uh, pull in the Cinematic Strings first violins patch. And so this puts us on channel two, which is fine for our purposes. I'm gonna use MIDI find and find tremolo. And now I'm going to redirect to the key for Cinematic Strings, trem is C sharp zero, and I'll MIDI learn that. And so now, Tremolo and sent you know, channel 16, B minus two, which is what this, uh, this button sends, will get redirected to um, key C sharp zero on channel two. I should configure that. And there, thereafter, once that key switch is triggered, it will send or route all subsequent events on any channel to channel two. So let's try that out. Um, if I send legato, uh, then that worked. Uh, what if I do spiccato? That worked. Tremolo now should send me to cinematic strings. And it did. So um, yeah, that that's pretty much all of the use cases I want to cover. I think that uh, covers, you know, the gamut. Uh, and hopefully it was useful. And, uh, and hopefully it's not too confusing on how to use this thing. It is, you know, a little bit cumbersome and with great power comes great responsibility. Um, if you have any suggestions on, on how to improve it, make it a little bit more user friendly, um, any useful features, if you find bugs, which there probably are some, uh, please let me know either on the forum or, uh, or open a GitHub account if you don't already have one and file an issue, uh, which would be preferable to me. And that way I can track them uh, or better yet, uh, fork the, fork the, uh, the project, fix the bug and submit a pull request. That's the best possible option. Um, otherwise, hope you guys find this useful and uh, let me know if you have any uh, feedback at all. I appreciate it.